We are in script four of our guided project on land cover analysis. So far, we've learned how to load land cover data, clip it to a selected admin two boundary, and also export this to a computer. Uh, let's do something different. Let's say we want to create a map of water bodies. Uh, the, uh, uh, one application of land cover data is that we already know what the pixel represents, and we can extract those pixels and create a map of only those pixels. Uh, let me inspect these pixel values. So if I inspect on a pixel, I'll get a values that range from 10 to 100. And looking at the data set documentation, you can see in the bands tab, there's a table here, which says what are the different values and what are the description. So here we're gonna create a map of all the water bodies in the region. So here, the pixel value 80 is the one that is specified for the water class. So let's select those pixels. And I can verify that if I click on a water body, you'll see that the value of the pixel is 80. So we'll create a variable called water and we'll say classification. And we have an image, we want to select a particular pixel value so we can use those Boolean operations. Uh, Earth Engine provides this Boolean operations like EQ greater than, less than, and so on, where we can uh, apply this for each pixel. Uh, these operators are different than filters that we used earlier. So the filters uh, apply on a collection versus this operators apply on each pixel of an image. So this is similar to like if you want to filter an image and select only a particular pixels, you use this Boolean operators. The output of this Boolean operator will be a one zero image. So if I add this layer to the map uh, and let's visualize this using min zero and max one. So this will have only two pixel values, one where the condition matched and zero where the condition didn't match. And what you should see is all the pixels that were value 80, which were water bodies, which would be now in white and rest would be in black. Right, so here is our extracted image where all the pixel values one are uh, water. We can also visualize this in a different way. So we can specify a color where we'll say, just give it in a color white and blue. So zero will be white, one will be blue. And we just name it as water. So here we're displaying all the, the water bodies. Sometimes you may want to just display only the water. You say, I don't want to display the zero pixels. I want to kind of overlay the water pixels on top of a base map. So uh, we can use this function called self mask. So self mask is a helper function which will uh, mask out all the zero values. So if you have a binary image, if you do self mask, all the pixels which are zero will be masked out and will set to its transparent. I'm going to comment out this layer and we'll see the result of the uh, applying the self mask. So now you can see all the water pixels uh, are overlaid on the base map itself. So you are just displaying those on the map. So uh, you can see this um, matches quite nicely with our uh, base map provided by Google and the classification shows all the water bodies. If you're just interested in the raster data of uh, water bodies, you can export this, you'll get a geotiff file with value zero and one, which you can use further in your analysis. But maybe you want to take this analysis one step further and we want to convert this to a vector data. So we want the polygons for each of those boundaries. So let's convert it. Uh, the conversion is done using this function called reduce to vectors. So it can be applied on any image where you can say reduce to vectors and it's gonna uh, convert those uh, all connected pixels into polygons. So let's do this. We'll just say vectors is take our water self mask. Uh, it's good to do self mask because we don't want polygons for all the pixels which are zero. You don't want a big polygon covering all the, the zero pixels. So we'll just apply it on the masked image and we'll apply this function reduce to vectors. This takes many parameters. I'm going to go control space to auto complete this. First is going to uh, uh, ask for a reducer. Uh, if you have multiple bands, it, it needs to know how each pixel's value should be determined. We don't want to uh, specify that. The default value just, you know, uh, reducer called count every and just use that. 
the geometry in which region you want to do this, which is specified geometry, scale at what scale you want to vectorize it to happen, we'll specify the native scale. Um, we'll leave it to the default geometry type. Eight connected, uh, how does, uh, should our attention determine what pixels are connected to each other? Uh, if you look at each pixel, it is uh, by default is uh, specified as connected to top, bottom, left and right pixels. But you also want the diagonals to be considered as connected pixels. You can set it to true. Uh, uh, you can try this out. Sometimes I see that if I set it to true, it, it results in some invalid geometries. So I would recommend starting with false, see the results. And if you want to then try it out, try uh, setting it to true. And that's it. I think we can uh, skip all these parameters. If your layer is very large, you can specify a max pixels parameter, or if you get an error that computation or too many pixels, you can do that. Okay, and let's see if this worked. So it's a map for that there vector. And the vector should be a feature collection, which is will be have one polygon for each of those regions, which are water in this. And you can now see that we have uh, this polygons extracted from the image. So we started with the classification image, extracted all the pixels that were water, and then we converted all the connected pixels to a uh, vector layer. And now we, since we have a vector layer, we can export that uh, to our Google Drive. So I'm gonna run this export table to try function, control space to autocomplete. And we're gonna fill in each parameter here. So the collection that we want to export is called vector. The description, we'll write it as motor polygons export folder. We'll put it in the Earth Engine folder in a Google Drive. The name of the shape file will be water polygons. File format, we can, uh, Earth Engine supports multiple export uh, formats. Let's just see. It supports uh, shape files, KMLs, or GeoJSONs. So we'll just go ahead with uh, shape file. So we'll specify SHP as the file format. And let's run the script. And I'll start the task. Uh, remember the the description of the task should not have spaces. So if you had spaces, replace them with uh, underscores. Right, so the export is started. I'm gonna show you once the export finishes, we'll have to download this data to our drive and then we can load it into our GIS software. All right, so I'm in QGIS, my export is finished. I downloaded the shape file and let's load it up. Here you can see now I have polygons for each of the water body that we exported from the classification data. And this is quite helpful where now we can take these water bodies and work with them as vectors in the GIS, useful for mapping, further analysis, and so on. So we're done with script four. I'll see you in the next video where we'll learn how to calculate area of different classes.